Body shot. Ooh, that hurt, didn't it? When adrenaline starts pumping and you know what you can do with this right hand, it's hard to not do that. Here are your hosts, Derek G and AJ. Max Holloway, Yair Rodriguez. Who knew it would be this crazy of a matchup? Some talking fight of the year contender. It seems like we've had a lot of those folks. A lot of recency bias. Chris Cyborg, she defends her featherweight uh, belt over there at Bellator. Easy one. Minus 2,000 odds. What are we talking about? And uh, quitting on the stool. Hype trains derailed. I think we're going to talk about all of that stuff. Cynthia Calvillo will be a big name in the MMA media press over the next couple of weeks or so. Folks, my name is Derek G. I am your host. Checking in with me, as always, the New Mexico native, the Santa Fe bomber. AJ, what's happening, brother? It's a big week in the MMA uh, just kind of landscape right now, man. Three back-to-back-to-back banging cards man 11 fights nine finishes andrea lee and chaos williams get performance of the night max holloway yair rodriguez get fight of the night my first question to you brother is uh listen man nobody i think me and you included expected yair rodriguez to put up the performance that he did 25 months away from the sport and it does truly seem like the man is number three in the division for a reason uncle dana knew something that we clearly didn't Brother, talk to me. What'd you think of the fight, my man? Man, that was wild, man. They, he had uh, Yair Rodriguez had Max uh, a little hurt a couple times. I was a little nervous for my pick going forward. <laughs> the power that uh, Yair was able to like generate literally from the start to the finish. Yeah, that was an instant classic, man. It is, it is hard to say fight of the year just because of recency bias. You got to go back and watch all the absolute classics that have been made up this year. But man, that was uh, quite a scrap. Those, those are one of those ones that as a fight fan, or, uh, you, you know, you don't have any friends who are fight fans. You show them that fight, and you're like, yo, watch this. Watch oh, yeah. how these dudes go at it. And, yeah, that's a, that's one that brings fans to the sport, man. How would you think about it? What did you like about it? I thought it was one of the more competitive Max Holloway fights that we've seen in quite some time. I thought only Volkanovski at this point could give him one of those competitive fights. But uh, to see Yair Rodriguez do it was impressive. To see Max Holloway weather the storm, weather the calf kicks, uh, basically be the better fighter and win the fight because he was the better fighter proved to me that that I'll take the stairs approach as opposed to the elevator divas uh, is a real thing. He's not playing around, man. He's willing to walk through the mud to be able to get to the title again. And you got to respect it because when we look at this later down the road, um, this is what makes legends. This is what makes great fighters is going through that adversity and stuff like that, man. So that was super huge. Uh, in Bellator news, AJ, man, what do you think? Chris Cyborg, minus 2,000 odds. She got the job done. Round one, knockout finish. Was anybody surprised? Absolutely not. Does this title defense really mean anything that's the question that we need to start asking over here my man i mean shanid kavanaugh fighting out of sbg ireland relatively unknown um some people say it was the the next conor mcgregor didn't look like it against cyborg talk to me brother i mean listen with bellator it's bellator for a reason but does it mean anything to you like when i say this are you impressed at all like what are we talking about uh not so much derek because of the minus 2000 favorite the kind of somewhat unknown name of the opponent that she was fighting. And uh, I mean, as much as we like to clown on Bellator for being, you know, the next next best thing, quote unquote, to the UFC. Yeah, it's kind of sad whenever they have those fights that like imagine if it would have been the other way around, then it'd be something to talk about. Yeah. But if not, yeah, it's kind of uh, a little lackluster on the side of the newsworthy, you know, so yeah. not really that impressed. Kind of thought coming. What do you think? No, I, I agree with you. But on the other hand, it makes me question is cyborg that dominant that we're just at this point like you have to do something spectacular to impress us you know what i mean when uh amanda nunez was able to get her out of there that was a huge deal right but cyborg smashing everybody is not really a big deal so i don't want to take too much credit away from her because you still got to get in there perform get the dub um but i would like to see just a step up in competition you are the champion after all let's have true challengers and contenders um aj lastly in bellator news you remember uh a fighter, a young prospect fighter, man. Uh, last fight out, she got yelled at by her coaches, and it was a whole big deal. And we're talking about Valerie Lareda, man. She fought again this weekend at Bellator 271 against Taylor Turner. It was five and eight. Um, it was a competitive, competitive fight. Came down to a split decision. AJ, this is the question for you, man. Um, Valerie Lareda, she hit that little viral dance that she always does. You know what I'm saying? Like after the win, it was it was totally cool. All that she says, I'm back. Da 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 da. Um, for the hype of this prospect over here, who has a uh, a competition record, or, or I guess it's, I guess I should say, her competition has a combined record. Sorry about that. Of nine and twelve. Her last the last fight that she just took, Taylor Turner, five and eight. 
underwhelming right there, struggling to get the job done, hyping up herself and being hyped up by the machine as if she is the next contender, which I don't think she's there. 23 years old, she's young. AJ, tell me what you're thinking about this whole entire situation, man. Valerie Lareda, an enigma. She brings the numbers, man. People watch her fight, but she's still very much like, she could technically be like, I don't want to say amateur, but on the lower end of the scale in terms of true competition. What are you thinking, brother? Like, I'm trying. I'm not trying to discredit whatsoever. I'm just trying to truly assess what I'm seeing here. What do you think? I mean, the the hype is real, or I guess not real, but it is there. You can see why people are getting behind Valley Lareda. You know, she has the skills, but against high level competition, she kind of starts to fall a little bit flat. You know, yeah. so it's weird to say, but I do. I, I like the aspect that she's bringing of hyping herself up. You got to be most confident in yourself when you're going in there, and in order to step in the ring, man, it takes a lot, a lot of cojones and able to get it done. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I, I like that she's still celebrating, even though it's a split decision win. All the all the all the you know extracurriculars beside, she's still a pretty talented fighter. Mm-hmm. It's just we need to see her with some actual legitimate real deal skill, and there's somebody who's you know above that 500 mark at least. Yeah, what do you think? Well, that's the thing, man. Her last fight prior to Taylor Turner was against Hannah Guy, and a lot of people thought that was a very underwhelming fight, and Hannah Guy ended up winning, right? And mm-hmm. Valerie Lareda says that Hannah Guy isn't truly better than her. Yeah, she beat her that night, but she's not a better fighter. So it's interesting to me because that was i don't know if you remember or if you even watched on that one that was a main uh like a main card slot she got bumped way down to the bottom of the prelims on this one and the reason why i believe is because that hype you have to deliver with the entertainment value you can't lose you can't have an underwhelming performance and be talking all that you know talk and then you know kind of expect these things all to fall in line so this is i guess a conversation for another day but the point here is Enigma, keep an eye out on it. You know what I mean? Uh, Valerie Lareda, she, I mean, listen, she's in Bellator. She's a legit fighter. You know, she's not like just some, um, you know, Instagram person trying to do this. So she actually is a fighter, legitimately. You know what I'm saying? So all respect. Big win against Taylor Turner. But uh, this is, I think, keep it in line with the theme of Bellator, where I'm talking about just step up in competition, brother. Come on. What are we talking about? AJ, you won this week, my man. You got the win on the week. Four and one. Very impressive. I got three and two um, myself. So not too bad. But I did uh, I did miss out bad on the first two fights. Miguel Baeza, crazy. We'll talk about it in a second. And Julio Arce, another just crazy one. We'll talk about that one, too. Um the only one you missed out on, my man, Big Ben Rothwell. And we were just talking about this when the when the mics were cold, man, that uh, I don't think you expected that to happen. I'm not too surprised that I see it happening that way. Not exactly. But uh, listen, man, solid week. We still got some time left in this competition, and you were starting to get uncomfortably close to me. So I don't really appreciate that. But <laughs> hey, man, that just goes to show how good we're doing here on our picks here, folks. So once again, performance of the night, Andrea Lee. Performance of the night, Chaos Williams. Fight of the night, Max Holloway. Uh, Yair Rodriguez, AJ. And uh, just a couple more things before we uh, get into the groove of, the, of this stuff right here, my man. I want to talk to you about Liana Jojua really quickly, man. She fought Courtney Casey. Uh, Courtney Casey was 9-9 and in her MMA career prior to this fight. She was 5-8 and eight in the UFC. She moved to 6-8 and eight with this win over Liana Jojua. Um, Jojua, I told you I was a big fan just because of, as, the, as a prospect, man. She has great submission skills, great grappling. Stand-up needs, needs some work, you know what I mean? Um, but as a prospect, I was very hyped up, man. She's part of the stable of Georgian fighters from the true country of Georgia um, who are killing the game. But she has been the most underwhelming. She looks the most like she shouldn't really be in the big show. Like she needs to go rack up a couple more wins and another promotion and then maybe come back eventually if she can get back to the big show. Um, My question to you, man, is what do you think it means to be the worst rated fighter in terms of, I'm not even, once again, no dish, I'm not, I'm not coming in violent today, man. You know what I mean? No shots taken, but you have the worst record of the entire Georgian stable of fighters who are so promising we're looking to take over the ufc what do you think that feels like my man do you think she's in a tough spot right here so let's not like kick nobody while they're down but just give me your take yeah she's in a rough spot i mean you gotta there, there's two sides to it i think you gotta either stay humble in the fact that you know i'm still in the big show like i'm still getting it done i'm still one of these fighters that's able to maintain this top level of competition even though I've been a little bit underwhelming and kind of undelivering, you know, not, not really delivering on all the stuff that the rest of the competition has been doing to that aspect. You got to really think, you know, I'm, I'm with these people, you know, my, all my Georgian homies are over here delivering. What are they doing? That's different. Got to get on the training schedule. Got to get on something that I'm missing. And, and really in, uh, in Jojua, she's just been, 
has has the the on skills papers or on paper excuse me paper on skill to get things done stand up needs a little bit of work like you were saying but she has it all there it's just when it comes to time to the to the actual big show it seems like she becomes a shell of herself i, I was listening to uh i think it was michael bisbee talking about this earlier where they you you work your entire life you give up so many things to get to this one spot you're dropping people left and right on the regional scenes you finally get to the big show and then it becomes so much because you have so much emphasis and and like drive to get here that it almost becomes too much for you and you become a shell of yourself and it really seems like that's what liana joju is really becoming are, are happening to her mm -hmm. she's she's the the pressure's too much the lights are too bright and as much as she wants this to happen you can only want it so much before actually delivering it what do you think derek is it is, are the lights too bright for her? is this a, a technique issue we're seeing going forward listen man i think part of this had to do with uh this was her united states debut prior to this she's only fought in fight island you know what i mean she's from georgia she's not from here so that could have been a, a big thing however i think she had part of her camp here in vegas so tried to acclimate a little bit I mean, she looked spooked in this fight. She looked much more spooked than she did when she fought Miranda Maverick. So that was telling to me originally. She missed weight going into the fight. There's a lot of things here that were just kind of red flags that maybe I could have picked up on prior to the fight. But you never really know. You know, you just kind of want to bet on the prospect and, and see where we go from there. The point is, I think for me, that Courtney Casey is generally speaking, she's normally like an underdog in her fights, right? She was a favorite in this one. And she looked damn near like a world beater against Liana Jojua when that has not been the case against most of her other respective opposition. So that makes me wonder... How good is Liana Jojo? That's the question that we all need to find out, man. And uh, I would honestly like to see her back in the regional scene, pick up some big confidence, boosting wins, and then come back to the UFC. There's nothing wrong with it. She's very, very young in her career. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that one, man. And then uh, lastly, I guess before we uh, move on to all the other stuff, man, because I got some photos that are kind of going to tie along with the, you know, some of the fights that we could talk about. Da Eun Jung, man. Fighting out of South Korea, your boy. This was your sleeper, right? This was it. No, no, no. no. It was it was going to be one of my sleepers? Oh, that's right. But, that's uh, right. but this is still a banger, though. Yeah, this was still a banger. Your sleeper was actually uh, uh, who'd you have, man? Woodson. England. Yeah, yeah. England Woodson. There we go. Sorry about that. I and mean, it's too many fights rolling around, man. But this one was a banger alert that we both knew. Hey, man, we're like, why are people? Well, this is the first bout. Okay, interesting. This might have been my sleeper. I don't even know anymore, man. This is somebody's sleeper. So probably mine. The point here is AJ Kennedy and Chuku, right? Killer, monster power, slow starter. Prove that again here this weekend, man. Da Eun Jung, elbows, Matt Brown style, got him the hell out of there. How impressive was that, brother? Truly, how impressive was that? Well, very impressive. I mean, it, it, we we knew Nchuku was a slow starter from the jump, but being able to elbow somebody through their guard and right. then put him out, well, yeah. the, guard, the guard is up, man. That's the thing defending you. You know, you can stop yeah. a lot going through there. But elbows coming over the top, basically jamming your elbow into somebody's arm and then having their arm hurt their own self. <laughs> Yeah, that's hell of impressive. And it was crazy to see the fight where they were literally toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Like, mm -hmm. there was no space. You know, they could have landed a lot of other stuff, but they said, you know what? We're going phone booth style. We're yeah. rocking in here. And uh, Njuku paid the price, man. I mean, he has power as well. He was looking slick. That straight left that he was throwing out looks really, really nice. But the power of Jung, man, damn. Yeah. yeah, that was a good fight. Very impressive. One of the most uh, unknown fighters at this moment, I truly believe, that is going to be a problem coming out of South Korea. And AJ, man, I just got to say, I got to give the UFC a little bit of flack real fast, man. Listen, shame on you, UFC, when they when they did the winning, you know, graphic, how they do. They used a picture of the Korean zombie for Da Eun Jung, man. It's like you mixed up your South Koreans, bro. What are we talking? This is an international sport here, man. Come on, UFC. Shame on you, goddammit. Um, all right, AJ. Let's do this before we get into the ranking review, man. Fighter of the night. A lot of good ones to pick from, my man. And uh, honestly, I'm going to be interested to see who you pick from first. So I would like you to go first. There's so many choices. Like I said, 9 out of 11 fights got finished. A lot of great storylines, intangibles, narrative. So with all those things tying together, AJ, you know how we do it on this program. Who is your fighter of the night for UFC Vegas 42, brother? You're right, Derek. There was a lot of fighters you could choose from, a lot of wins, a lot of knockouts, a lot of stuff, man. But I went with somebody who has it both inside and outside of the octagon, really embodies the, uh, the the mentality that I like to push forward to, you know, my friends, clients, all these people that I talk to, that kind of... Uh, you said it before, Derek, that stairway mentality, bro. I'm going with Max Holloway. It seems almost a little bit like a layup, 
But the fact of that, what the work, the work that this guy puts in inside and outside of the octagon, whether it's an absolute war we're seeing with Yair Rodriguez, where he's being tested. Max Holloway was tested real hard. That chin was tested. Those ribs were tested. The calf kicks were on point from Yair Rodriguez, but Max Holloway stayed marching through, and it seems to be his demeanor going forward for his entire life. Whether it's out at YNI where he's talking about being in the Boys and Girls Club and winning the Forrest Griffin Award coming up next year, man, this dude deserves it all. Everything that comes to him, he deserves it for the hard work and the mentality he puts forward of that good spirit. I'm going to do good to get good out of it. He always says to be the best, you got to be the best, and the best is blessed. And that's a there's a reason for that because of the hard work he puts in going forward and the mentality he brings to the sport, man. I really, really like Max Holloway, not only for his hands and feet, but for his mentality and the work he brings outside of the octagon, whether it's working for kit, working with kids, you know, the YMCA, all the stuff he does back home. And what I like about him most, man, he's he's true to his roots. He's, he's not one of the ones that got famous and, you know, he jumped out. He's going back. He's living somewhere nice and fancy, you know, talking, you know, all the smack about, yeah, you know, I'm from there, but you know, I don't live there anymore. You know, he's actually still in Why Not. He's still in the hood. He's still back with his people, man. And I love that a lot. I know me, me a little bit. I'm a little bit of a nomad, man. I moved around a little bit, but I still got roots back in New Mexico and I still stay oh, strong back there. I just wish that uh, a lot more people would be happy with their hometown and happy with things going forward, man. So I love the fact that Max Holloway is able to stay true to who he is. And because of that, his uh, his life has been pos- prosperous because of it, man. That's my fighter of the night, Max Holloway. Getting it done inside and outside of the octagon. Deserves everything that's coming to him, man. Who's your fighter of the night? Well, right, well, I'm inspired, brother. That was an inspirational speech right there. You know what I'm saying? You're just saying Max Holloway is the, the Hawaiian version of La Raza right there. You know what I'm saying? Come on, represent. You know, represent. Keep it locked in, folks. Don't forget where you came from. That's a big moral of the story. But uh, AJ, man, my fighter of the night is going to be somebody that came from your sleeper. That Sean Woodson call an England fight Sean Woodson my man he is my fighter of the night and here's the reason why AJ not only does he make it look easy against Colin England man a dude who says I'm gonna fight with a chip on my shoulder I'm gonna come in here and I felt like I didn't leave it all in the cage last time so I'm gonna come and I'm gonna show this dude Sean Woodson what I'm about right tallest featherweight in the division longest featherweight in the division used to be a big boy we'll talk about that he slimmed down a little bit my man but after losing to Julian Arosa there's a lot of questions the man was undefeated I believe he was 7-0 at the time and uh, you get Darce choked out in the third round you don't you don't almost make it to the finish line you get submitted you didn't want to quit on yourself and then you have to ask yourself, what does this what is this going to do for my career trajectory? Am I going to be a loser? Am I going to rack up a couple losses? Am I going to get mentally unfocused? Do I need to switch training camps? What do I need to do? This isn't supposed to happen. He comes back against Yusuf Zalal, who, for whatever reason, the Moroccan devil, I love him, man, but he came in with a takedown heavy approach against Sean Woods, and he says, I just want to take him down. I've been over here at Extreme Couture or whatever, and I just want to wrestle this guy. Well, Sean Woodson did a lot of cage wrestling, defended a lot of takedowns, said, you know what? I'm one of the baddest strikers in the division and you can't take me down okay we're making a little bit of progress he gets a split decision win some people think Zalal should have won I think it was a clear win two to one for Sean Woodson all right that answers some questions but now in this Colin Anglin fight that's where the real questions rely or reside excuse me so what do we see Sean Woodson dealing with the pressure of Colin Anglin all right, what are we going to do? We get pushed up against the cage. Oh, no, here we go again. You reverse it. You say, get up off me. You're not going to take me down. I'm going to snipe you to the head. I'm going to touch you in the body. I'm going to hit you so many times. I'm going to point at you a couple times like, you knew that hurt, man. He did that uh, Corey Sandhagen style where Sandhagen hit uh, TJ Dillashaw with a body shot. That's the beginning of our intro, right? Body shot. Ooh, that hurt, didn't it, right? That's what Sean Woodson did to Colin Anglin in this fight. He made it look so easy. He shows just how dangerous of a sniper he is and if you can't take him down folks i promise you this is going to be a scary dude you featherweights are not going to want to mess with this man all of the things are lining up for him and he seems to be a real dark horse a real contender at this point um not like a heavy contender but you know creeping up right there contender status in the featherweight division and I'll just say, um, you're not going to find another dude who's coming in humble, who wants to be active, who wants to fight, who has a long frame like this, and uh, listen, could put it on you, touch that liver one time. You're not going to find another guy who could do it just as good as Sean Woodson. I truly believe that, AJ. Do you agree with me here in, in my hype on this one, man? Do you think that he's truly the killer I'm hyping him up to be, or am I, uh, am I romanticizing a little bit? 
Nah, man. Woodson has a very bright future going in the featherweight division, bro. This dude is a killer, especially with the height and the reach he has and the techniques. That snappy front kick that he's able to jab into the body. Yeah, dude, this dude is very dangerous going forward. Like you said, Derek, you got to watch out if you're in the featherweight division because this dude is coming for your head. Absolutely, folks. So Sean Woodson is my fighter of the night for AJ. We're rocking with Max Blessed Holloway. It's hard not to rock with that man after the performance that he had. But um, listen, folks, if you like the segment, drop a like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Folks, as we're speaking right now, we're currently at 272 subscribers, man. Thank you guys. Like legitimately, we've been calling a subscribe, drop a little bit, get us to 300. We 30 away, man. At this rate, we're going to be there in due time, man. I will just say this, folks. Uh, Bloody Water Podcast podcast.com is the hub bloody water podcast on instagram bloody water pod on twitter i'm on fight night sometimes i'll be live tweeting off of the twitter the bloody water pod man we getting some some good retweets over there at the mma twitter man so don't be afraid you know follow like subscribe all the good stuff you already know what i'm saying aj my man um we had all of this craziness we talked about all these sleepers but there's one dude who we have yet to talk about and we need to and uh, that's going to be for this next segment coming up right here brother the 60 seconds ranking review brother we got a lot to talk about today brother all right my man so we're headed to the lightweight division today to talk about our rankings dispute because uh, there's a man who is about to enter the top 15 who was not there yesterday who a lot of people probably did not expect him to be there i'm not gonna lie man he is one of the most impressive sleeper dark horse fighters who is storming on the scene who when i saw him fight this weekend and perform the way he did i was like oh yeah that's right that's that one guy <laughs> i was like that's that one dude who's just whooping everyone's ass like oh i completely forgot about that dude right which is interesting because you shouldn't be forgetting about dudes who are just starching people right like generally speaking you should remember them he was noteworthy this week and uh he was no noteworthy not for a good reason it was for missing weight actually i'm talking about joel alvarez man i'm talking about a man representing spain um a man who has uh, let me see right here. Actually, I got the stat on here. A man who it looks like maintains a 100% finish rate, my man. He has 19 wins in his MMA career. 100% finish rate. 4-1 and one in the UFC. Nobody knows who the hell this man is, but his name is Joel Alvarez, and he just beat the brakes off of Tiago Moises in under a round, man. It was beautiful violence, but at the same time, it was very stunning to see a man who just went four rounds with Islam Makashev, one of the best to do it right now get starched so quickly against Joel Alvarez. So I want to talk about this man's record real fast, man. He hasn't really fought too many notable names, except his UFC debut, who was against another killer who we love to talk about here, Demir Ismagulov, right? So he loses there. No, you're not going to win against that man. He's ragdolling anybody. Come on, we already know he's a killer. If you watch this show, you know how dangerous he is, right? Um, he gets another win after that, not notable name. He fights Joe Duffy. Guillotine chokes Joe Duffy. We're talking about Joe Duffy here, man. I mean, that's respect right there, okay? We got a little something here. He fights Alexander uh, Yakolev, armbar. Cool. Still not the most known right there. And then he gets this Thiago Moises win, right? So finish, 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 finish. I mean, all the fights before, finish, triangles, darces. Basically, he's a submission specialist, man. I think in his 19 finishes, he has like 16 by submission, right? So he's killing the game. He's dangerous, clearly. Needs to make weight, right? You know, I mean, you can't really... He probably would have had a performance bonus had he made weight. So that's that's on him right there. But the point is, um, you just knocked out a man. You're known for your submission. You just knocked out a man. Standing elbows and uppercuts, right, for Tiago Moises. They had to call it. Dude was on stilts, on shaky legs, right? And you're not known as the knockout artist. So it goes to show you're, you're multifaceted. You're a dangerous, dangerous man. But the question here, AJ, and I know it's apples to oranges in some respect here, but... He's going to enter at least number 15, right? You beat Tiago Moises. Tiago Moises is ranked number 15 by the UFC consensus, 15 by me, and 15 by you. Across the board, 15. But if Islam Makashev got a big bump in his ranking because he beat Tiago Moises, right? Because before his last win against Dan Hooker, what did he get bumped up to? Like seven, you know, eight, or something like that? Is it not hypocritical? To say, oh, Joel Alvarez, well, you only beat Tiago Moises, so you just go to 15. He beat Tiago Moises in a better, faster, more dominating and devastating fashion than Islam Makashev did. I'm just saying for the sake of fairness here, because, you know, I'm all about, you know, egalitarianism and all that. In the sake of just, you know, let's keep it fair. 
Do you think he should get a bigger bump than just being at number 15? I mean, Joel Alvarez looks like a killer. 100% finish rate. 4-1 in the UFC, brother. What are we talking about? Yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly right here, Derek. I think he should. I think I'm looking at my top 15 right now, and I'm thinking like, all right, so Islam Makachev. I got him number five. You got him number four. UFC is number four. Um, and you you, t- you take on Joel Alvarez. You're like, all right, who can he beat here in my top? Let's just say we're going under Islam Makachev and below. Dan Hooker, Greg Gillespie, all these people that I'm looking at. He looks like he can beat a lot of these dudes coming forward, man. There's there's a lot of r- wiggle room that Joel Alvarez has because, uh, yeah, dude, this dude is an absolute killer. Being able to get it done like that against Tiago Moises was absolutely impressive. And, and – I, I don't know what I'm trying to think of the way like why it is so hypocritical because you're right, man. Um, but Makachev got bumped up real high against that Thiago Moises fight, and a lot now a lot of people are starting to think like, ah, okay. I mean, you know, it's not that impressive that Alvarez yeah. when he did this, and like I don't I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that he got beat by Makachev, and then it's like, okay, he's not that good. But then you actually ragdoll this yeah. dude. He, he's still Mo, Moises is still an absolute killer out yeah. there. Lest we not forget, this dude is a, is an absolute headhunter, man. He can he can take you out no problem. Um, I, I, I it's going to be hard to rank him any higher than than you know top ten at least for me. Going forward, I'm probably going to have him a little bit lower than that. I don't. I honestly don't know at the moment because this dude is an absolute killer going forward. What do yeah. you think, Derek? Where where do you see him lying? And how many of these people in our top fifteen do you think he can beat? pretty handily like he did Tiago Moises. Well, it's interesting because I think there's some people who are really high in the top 10 who he could beat, but some people who are in my top 10 to 12 who he might not be able to beat, which is interesting because I'd love to see the test, right? So for an example, because I'm just, I like to go down and buy it strategically, right? So Moises, can he beat him? Yeah, I'm well, he already did. He started, he beat the brakes off of him. All right, cool. Um, Tony Ferguson, would he be able to beat El Kukui? It sucks to say, but at this stage of his career, Probably, right? Armin Sarukian, that's where it gets interesting. I don't know. That'd be an interesting, interesting test because Sarukian has great wrestling, right? So he might be able to negate some of that submission pressure. He has really good striking. He's a pace guy. Dangerous man. Nobody wants to fight him. I don't know. Then I go down to Conor McGregor, and I'm like, you know what, man? I don't want to throw dirt on the man who's built up so much of this UFC stuff, all the hype. Could he beat Conor? And listen, I might even get roasted, get killed up in the comments for this, man. Yeah, maybe, probably. I mean, with the performance that he put on, like, he, has he fought these Conor McGregor-esque fighters? No. But, I mean, let's just say, I mean, come on, man. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that one's a stretch. So I'll, I'll disregard that. But I'm just saying, is it possible? Listen, maybe, maybe. I'm just saying. RDA, could he beat him? I mean, I know that's your boy. I know that's my, I mean, that's my boy too, but could he? He's huge. Here's the other thing, man. This dude, Joel, Joel Alvarez is like 6'3", fighting at 155 pounds. Like, obviously, he couldn't make the weight this time around. He's such a huge man. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, AJ, I just think that there's going to be something that's going to have to get figured out here. We can keep going down the list, right? Gregor Gillespie, could he beat him? I actually don't know. That might be too much of a test for Gregor. Gregor is a really, 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 really good fucking prospect or contender, excuse me rinse those words out of my mouth prospect what am i talking about gregor's the real deal um but yeah man so somewhere in between number 15 and number 10 maybe i think he will end up lying in my rankings personally aj where do you kind of see him going you said it's kind of same thing right it'd be hard to put him inside the top 10 right yeah it's hard to put him anywhere above top 10 but i can easily see him in that 10 to 15 range i mean he his, his skill level is there. His yeah. skill level matches very well with that top 10 to top 15. It's just who can he beat within the matchup because the, the the styles make the fights really yeah. going forward. And against hard wrestlers, we saw like in, in his UFC debut, it's a little bit harder to get it done. So is he going to get it done against those hard wrestlers or is he yeah. going to get it done to a, a real deal striker? I'm honestly with you, Derek. I might catch some heat for this as well, but I do think he can beat McNuggets going forward. You know, we might catch some flack, but hey, man, I do think he has the skills to get it done. There's a lot of them up there that are really good tests. I'm excited to see where this dude's future, where Alves' future lies going forward, man. Right on, man. Right on. And I'll tell you, sometimes we do be catching a little flack, man. We got somebody who's calling us some uh, in the comments, some fanboys, because we uh, said uh, Sugar Show O'Malley might be a better total package than Cheeto Vera right now. Listen, man, no disrespect. It's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? The Sugar Show is the real deal, folks. I know he wants to fight bums and scrubs and all that, but you can't deny what you're seeing right there in front of you. All right, AJ, um, I think it's time, man. 
we got to break out some photos, big dog. We got to break out some photos. I go through these relatively quickly. You know what I mean? We got a lot to talk about here, man. But I want to jump on this one first and foremost. Rafael Alves, man. This is him jumping on a guillotine on Mark Jacasey right after he kneed him square in the face. One of the most athletic fighters on the roster. I told you guys this as a sleeper. I said, how could you not know about Rafael Alves? I think this was, uh, was this my sleeper? Mark Jacasey Alves? I think this was actually yep. my sleeper right here. So there we go. I told you guys. You're welcome. Um, but this is what I wanted to show right after, man. This is a dude so hyped, he picks up the doctor after. He says, I'm just picking up everybody, man. What's up? Let's do it. I'm hyped up to get my first UFC win. Um, this is a dude right now who, where I'm looking at it, it looks like he's... Uh, this is his ninth first-round finish in his MMA career. The man in total is 20-10. and 10. One, one in the UFC, brother. What do you make of the photo? Yeah, man. I, uh, I the, Going back to the first photo, that's... Uh, that's what you get for not, you know, not respecting your opponent and not touching gloves. You know, you, yeah. you come out, sure, you know, we want to throw some heat. That's that's what happens, man. You get choked out, you, and uh, it happened pretty fast. I mean, uh, Casey did get kicked in the nuts, so it is a yeah. little, it is a little, uh, you know, a little, little, little heat back there, a little back and forth. But <laughs> Alves, this dude is crazy. Does a backflip at mm. the very start. Well, one, he walks into the cage as a cartwheel to a to a tuck, and then while he's getting introduced, just literally does a standing back tuck. Yeah. This dude is is a full on machine, man, mm -hmm. and uh, a little reckless picking up an old, old doctor like mm -hmm. that. Even the doctor looked a little scared, bro. He was like, "Put me down." <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, I man. saw I saw him pick him up. Look how happy Alves looks too, <laughs> man. Just full on, just big smile. You gotta love it, but putting the doctor in a little bit of danger right there. Yeah, interesting dude. Love the uh, love the the blitz style he has. The amount of pop this dude carries in his shots is crazy. It's going to be a fun fun time anytime uh, Alves is in the fight, man. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. He did the same thing in his fight against Demir Ismagulov, except he got ragdolled immediately after doing these backflips and all that, man. So a very, very fun fight. It reminds me of a Michel Paeta, you know what I mean, where he's just fun, you know, likes to celebrate. I love it. Um, AJ, I told you earlier that Sean Woodson, um, he used to be big Sean Woodson, you know what I'm saying? And now he's little Sean Woodson. Um, yeah, did you know Sean Woodson used to look like that? 215? I didn't, Derek. You said it earlier, and I was like, I'm excited to see where we're going with this one. Because that's a, that's a pretty big boy right there. You know, he's he, he's not, like, fat or anything, but he's got some meat on them bones, man. And you look at Sean Woodson now, and those uh, those thighs are skinny. You can actually kind of see it in him now that I'm, I'm thinking about it going mm -hmm. forward. Because he does have that bigger upper body, yeah. that kind of going forward. He has, a, you know, he has a little bit of girth up top, but then his legs are very super skinny. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't know he was this big, man. Yeah, man. I 215, just, damn. Yeah, 215, 6'2", man, you know, that's a powerful man right there. But I just thought it was interesting because the way that I'm looking at it, I'm saying, okay, well, it makes sense having some power, some, like, residual power from, like, being used to – I used to be a bigger dude myself, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, having that, like – you remember the muscle memory of like, I know how to move somebody around a little bit. You know what I mean? So going from 215 to fighting at 145, I mean, that, that says something in it of itself right there. Um, right here, man, this is just Moises, bloodied up, got from got hit with the elbows, probably thinking, how the hell did I let this happen? How did I have all of this momentum? And it is all out of the window. We basically talked about it just a second ago, my man. But uh, what are the prospects looking like for Tiago Moises? Do you think he's got some comeback in him? I think he does, man. He's still a very dangerous fighter, even if he loses his uh, number 15 spot, which is more than likely. He, he still has a, a lot of danger in there, a lot of talent to go forward. It's just he's been really running into a, a, a lot of killers, man. It's it's hard to see, it's especially going from a rise, because Thiago Moises was doing really well catching those last two, man. It's hard to say. Because, I mean, they're, they're top-tier competitors, man. We could easily see both of his last opponents as the champions in the future, but it's rough. I, I see I see uh, Moises still having a long career in the UFC. What about you? No, absolutely, man. Just because you run into a certain, you know, couple killers and you drop a couple, that's the beauty of MMA is you don't have to have a flawless record, man. You can lose. You can come back. You just, It depends on the matchup. Styles make fights. That's what it comes down to. And he just looked outmatched from the jump, man. I mean, Alvarez was so much bigger than him. It, it was kind of crazy to see. But I love to see that he's game. And he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't care. Be bigger, smaller, whatever. Shout out, blessed, right? He says, everyone everywhere every time come on what are we talking about um aj you don't really got to say much about this but you know he's a confident dangerous fighter da and jung he's doing the walk-off he hit a very similar walk-off that uh jun young park 
um, actually hit uh, the Iron Turtle. So I, I just love to see it, man. I love the stable of South Korean fighters, man. They're so dangerous. A good friend of mine uh, moved out there to South Korea a couple years ago, man, and it just tells me how awesome the culture is and all that, man. Dangerous men over there. Very, very, not men and women, you know what I'm saying? But uh, just give me a take on the photo, AJ. You got Tanyoni waving it off like, no more, no more. Dun Jung just like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, talk to me, brother. Bro, yeah, you got John Gullen Gorilla Mode over there coming off. He's got the hands low. Yeah, this dude is full on. That's that's the that's the feeling you like right there, coming up, screaming. It's a good picture for Jung, man. He uh he might not have that classic pose that everyone likes to see, hands up like that, but this is like a, a real deal animal in there. I like this one a lot, man. This one might be a little bit better than that. This is the Kung Fu Monkey, man, hitting him with the what's up. This is uh, Song Yudong, my man. This is after he put it on Arce, where it was competitive, man. They look so evenly matched. And obviously, we'll talk about this. this is going to be the first um, uh, matchup that we're going to actually recap, right? But uh, just very quickly in maybe a sentence or two, man, um, what's next for this man, Song Yudong? Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous fighter right here. Only 23 years old. Very dangerous fighter, crazy hands, crazy power, crazy speed. Yeah, this dude, uh, we'll get to the matchmaking in a bit where I see him going forward. But Song Get Dong is the, I mean, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Song Get Dong is the real deal, man. This dude's crazy and uh, great picture. You know, yeah. having Herb Dean hold you back while he's pointing at the other guy who's sitting there with the what's up. Yeah, no, that, that's what you like, man. I, I, I think even Herb Dean picked him up a little bit because he's man. just so ecstatic. But yeah, this is a good one, man. I think this is him trying to say, like, oh, y'all really thought that this dude had a chance. Like, okay, I'm showing y'all who the real deal is. I just got Casey Kenny out of there. Arce next. What's up? Who's next? Let's do it, you know? So very impressive. And then lastly, AJ, this is going to take a, a little bit of a dark turn. Um, but this is just – I only got a couple more photos. Listen, man, this is something where you got to look at this every day um, if you're Cynthia Calvillo, folks. And if you're listening at home, this is a photo of Cynthia Calvillo um, where she's head down on the stool being consoled by her coaches. This is when she, you know, no mossed it. They threw in the towel for her, quit on the stool. And that might be harsh to say because the word is from the uh, Nevada State Athletic Commission that she followed the advice of her corner. So it could be more of a they threw in the towel as opposed to she quit on the stool. But the reality is at the end of the day, AJ, this is something that we all know. Um, you have a choice. Something you told me when we first met, man, and I will always remember. You always have a choice. And she made a choice on Saturday, uh, Saturday afternoon, I guess I should say. I don't want to downplay this and say that it's not a big deal because it is, but I also don't want to make too much of this because she's still relatively young in her career. And taking unnecessary damage is something we talk about far too often when fighters can put their ego aside and just say, hey, I'm going to live to fight another day. Give me your take on this whole entire situation, AJ. Do you think anybody here deserves any flack or do you think the right thing was done? And this is just a fighter saying, um, listen, man, I just got to come back again and do it again. And, uh, you know, Mexican pride aside, let's be smart. What do you think, brother? Yeah, no, I don't think anyone deserves any flack. I think she deserves a lot of credit, to be honest, man, because that's a... If you've ever if you've ever had that feeling of, you know, like, hey, man, today's not my day. I'm just going to hang it up. I'm going to do that. That's a smart decision instead of going out there and getting beat up. Because that's a, that's you can even see it in her body language. She's at her worst she's ever felt head down, hands down, just staring at basically into the oblivion because you're basically giving up on yourself. Even if you, even if your corner had the the. That's where I'm looking. They, they, they told you that, uh, you know, hey, you know, we're going to throw in the towel. It's not safe. You know, we're, it's just not our night. You still have the choice to go out there and say, no, fuck that. Like, I'm, I'm here to scrap. Yeah. But, you know, if that's not in you and that's not going forward and you don't run it, it's not necessarily pushing you out there, then the best thing to do is just call it right there. Live to fight another day. I think it's very smart by Calvillo to get this done like that because she was uh, she was getting handed pretty good by uh, by KGB Lee. And rough picture, man. It's, uh, that's one of those ones. Yeah, I'm I'm all about that. David Goggins can't hurt me, man. I got my uh, my accountability mirror in the bathroom. I got a bunch of stuff on. I've had some people say like that's that's kind of like mean the stuff you say to yourself in the morning, but it's the truth, man. It's the truth, go. and I think this is one of those pictures that you hang up right on your mirror. You look at that every day when you're brushing your teeth, and you're thinking, "Yo, fuck this. I'm never feeling like mm -hmm. this ever again. This is yeah, not absolutely. happening." We're working up forward, and uh, I honestly I give a lot of credit to Cavio to have the the cojones to be able to actually say. Nah, I'm good. 
No, absolutely, man. So mad respect. And that's that's the beauty of the situation is that you can take positives from it. You could treat it as a lesson and you can move on. You don't got to sit in the past. It's you got to have a short memory when you win this game, man. And you got to be able to say, like, I'm going to remember that this happened. I'm not going to forget, but I'm not going to, uh, you know, kind of just worry about it too much. You know what I mean? I'm not going to fixate on this stuff. At the end of the day, on this whole Calvillo situation, my man, um, I think personally it's going to be in her best interest. And who? What, what do I know? You know, but I think it'll be in her best interest to take a little step away from the game, reassess, refocus, get maybe a camp switch. I don't know. Do what you need to do. Um, but to not it, like when you're going through it like that, sometimes taking a step away is the best thing as opposed to trying to just fight through it, fight through it, fight through it. Because next thing you know, you put yourself on another big, you know, losing skid and you're out of the UFC. And that's not what we want to see out of one of the biggest hype trains that have come into the UFC. I mean, Uncle Dana was all like, yo, Calvillo was the next big thing. And she still can be. She's still young in her career. But I just wanted to put that out there, man. Well said. Much respect to her camp, her corner and herself for having the, uh, yeah, the nuts to be able to say, like, listen, man, I don't care what people think. I got to call it today. And shout out to Andrea Lee because, uh, listen, man, she looked stunning. Absolutely great performance. All right, AJ, last couple of things before we get into some recap, my man. Um, so you want to be a kicker, right? This is Yair Rodriguez's foot immediately at the end of the Max Holloway Rodriguez um, fight, right? But this is the thing, man. People think kicking is so glamorous and so great and beautiful and all that. And they're like, yo, you know, um, like I would love to be a kicker. I'd love to be this Taekwondo fighter, this kickboxer, whatever. All right, cool. Until you're getting checked, until you're hitting shin on shin or or foot on shin or foot on elbow or whatever, right? But if you thought that was bad, AJ, um, this is what it looked like after all that adrenaline wore off and he was just chilling in the hospital, my man. Yeah, that's a broken foot. You know what I mean? I don't think you need a doctor to tell. That's a broken foot. Once again, so you want to be a kicker. So you want to be a fighter. This is the reality of the fight game, my man. And uh, not it's not looking too good. What do you think about that, my man? Was it worth it? I mean, you lost. He had valiant effort and all that good stuff, man. But I just wonder if that's maybe why he started going away from the calf kick later on towards the fight. Because he was like, dude, my foot hurts, bro. Like, I'm not trying to get, you know, trying to hit this anymore. What do you think? Yeah, I think I definitely think that's why he went away from the calf kicks, man. Because you can you can see they literally the wrap is just underneath. They probably just took that wrap off. I wonder what this looked like thirty minutes later because that thing probably ballooned up to you know mid calf level, bro. This thing, yeah. You want to be a kicker? I remember in karate, one of the worst things that ever happened, or you would, you'd ever feel, yeah, shin on shin, that hurts like crazy. Mm -hmm. But you catch the top of your foot on somebody's elbow when they check it, mm -hmm. God. Damn, that hurts, bro. That is that's one of those ones where you like stop. You're like, all right, hold on, give me a minute, man. I'm a, I'm a limp off real quick because yeah. yeah, that's this. You want to be a kicker, and he even said after the thing, he's like, yeah, it is what it is. This is what kicking is. You're yeah. used to it. You deal with it. You know, it happens all the time, and it really does happen all the time. That's a rough one though, man. Look, look at his toes haven't even swollen up yet. It's just all in that foot. That thing is probably three times the size of the other foot. Yeah, that's a rough one, man. What do you think? I just know that, listen, you know, you're going to be an old man. Those feet going to be hurting, man. You're going to have bad arthritis in those feet, you know, all these breaks. It's just the reality of the game, man. But that's just what I think about first is like when you're old, it's going to suck. You know, it's going to be cold. You know, stay in the warm weather, brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, do something like that because that's going to suck, man. It's the cost of the game, man. If you know your strategy, you know your strength is to throw a trillion kicks, kicks all day long, you know, eventually you're going to break your foot. You're going to hurt your shin. You're going to have a messed up toe. You know what I mean? Um, and that's the that's the cost of the game, man. So, all right, AJ, that's the photo recap that I got right there, brother. And uh, once again, folks, drop a like, subscribe. We appreciate you. Let's boom up to 300 subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, yeah, man, that's really all I got. You know the spiel. Y'all know the spiel. What are we talking about, brother? We do a week in and week out. All right, man. Song Yudon gets the win over Julio Arce. Listen, this was super impressive, dude. This was super, super impressive. Like, I, I cannot understate this enough. Song Yudong moves to 7-1-1 one one in the UFC. But this is his first KO win since 2019, man. So I think that's even more telling. Because we already said, what's the big differences here? Yudong has the speed advantage. He has the power. Arce is more technical, more cerebral. The power came out today, man. And it's interesting because his last knockout was against Alejandro Perez, which is something that they brought up on the broadcast, being like, oh, yeah, he beat this dude, da 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 But that was in 2019, man. That was a long time ago. So what does it mean to you that he is able to get this knockout? Do you see more knockouts coming into the future? I mean, this is a very, very legitimate bantamweight division, so it's easier said than done. And Julio Arce, even though he's a respected name, was not a top 15 fighter. What do you make of this, AJ? Yeah, uh, I mean, amazing fight, even back and forth in that first round. It's harder to get the, the knockouts, though. We've seen this happen a lot where 
the higher you get up in the uh, in the rankings, you know, the, the closer you get to the elite of the division, you start kind of getting more unanimous decisions or split mm-hmm. decisions or decision fighters start really coming out that way just because these dudes are so talented. So do I see more knockouts coming in Yudong's future? Probably, yeah, yeah, not many, especially once he starts climbing up those ranks. But I do see it because this dude's power is unmatched. He's very, very fast. And credit to Arce, man. Arce was game as ever. You know, mm-hmm. you you sitting in the pocket with this dude throwing absolute melons at your head. Yeah, this dude, uh, that's a hard one, man. All credit to Arce on that one. Good fight. Yadong, crazy power. I'm excited to see where this dude is going in the future, especially with the Team Alpha Male camp he has, because it looks like they're teaching him some good, you know, wrestling defense, good foot movement. This dude has a very bright future, and at like, what, 23? How old is he? 23 years old. 23 years old? Yeah, bro. That's This guy is going to be crazy going forward. I'm excited for Yadong's future. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see. What do you think? What do you think about the fight, Eric? I thought that that was a very, very impressive fight. It was very kind of even going into the, the second round. However, most people did think that Yadong won the first round. I thought it was very close. Um, I thought that Arce, man, it was like starting to begin. You could tell it was the beginning of the end as Yadong started to put it on more and more. But Arce was looking game, man. Like, I think he just kind of just got caught and it just happened. Like Yadong's power was just a little too much. Maybe he wasn't expecting it. Maybe he was. You never really know. Um, but it, it was very impressive, man. I would like to see Yudong against a top 10 opponent at this point personally you know what I mean I think he's done what it takes he beat Casey Kenny kind of take a step back against Arce which didn't really make sense to me um and Yudong even said it he was like this fight doesn't really excite me you know what I mean which was like a bold thing to say as such a young fighter you know but he's very experienced right so he's like this fight doesn't excite me he got the job done he's taking the stairs right taking that approach and uh we'll see where he ends up man but this was a big big win for the Kung Fu Monkey Song Yudong and folks I'm gonna get a better way of tracking this because I don't remember to be honest with you what we both uh called on the preview show but i will say that this one hit on the under at plus 155 under two and a half rounds song you don't got the job done so if you were watching that i mean shout out to that so we can move on to the next one my man and uh listen this was got how did this night get uh this got a performance bonus but this even could have got damn near like a fight of the night even though it got finished i don't know obviously the yair rodriguez holloway was such a banger but uh aj man i just got a picture that i need to bring up to encapsulate what this was this is just i just wrote sheesh underneath this is the moment where chaos williams drops by a, the booth goes crazy everyone goes crazy um, I even, we were, te- we were texting back and forth on, in Slack, right? And I was like, bro, I don't even know what he just, like, what just happened? What did he get hit with? Because Baeza, he's beating up Chaos Williams' calf, beating it up, beating it up, right? Out of nowhere, man, he gets overzealous, throws the calf kick, and then tries to stay in the pocket and throw like a right hand and gets caught with a right hook that just hits him right on the button. And you see the way he fell, man. He fell like he was like an action figure who just like toppled over. Like he was like legitimately like Chaos Williams does that to people, man. You know what I'm saying? So he got Baeza like that, flash knockout, good stoppage. Some people were arguing. I don't remember who it was, but I think it was one U- or UFC fighter. Henry Cejudo, actually. There we go. Triple C, right? Triple cringe. He was all like these fighters are these referees are stopping the fight too early they should have let the fight go on just because you get dropped doesn't mean you're done and it's true but at the same time i think he was done right there man i think that letting him get smashed with hammer fist by chaos williams would not have been a very bright idea for his mental health or anything like that what do you think of this my man chaos williams is a bad bad man bad man for sure man and uh, i think the what what get it done for me is baeza was looking great if he was staying technical, if he was staying on the outside, staying in range, not engaging in the war. But, man, Williams brings that war. And sometimes you just, you know, when the guy's in your face throwing heat, there's nothing else you can do but time to bite down on that mouthpiece and get to business, man. And uh, Williams just got the best of the exchanges. Even even round one to round two, I had Williams getting the best of the war, whereas I had Baeza really working, you know, work, mm-hmm. working the outside, get, getting the technique done best, man. Interesting to see that Chaos Williams took the Max Holloway approach of not really checking the checking the calf kicks and kind of just got worked on. Always a, a very risky approach we see some of these fighters take where they're not checking calf kicks. Yeah. But, you know, got it done, man. And this is one of those ones I, I you I think this was the fight where I said I think Baeza got, you know, knocked out and KO'd like three times back and forth mm-hmm. just 
in the in the matter of him hitting the ground and then bouncing back up and catching some hits. I think it was a very very good stoppage by the referee. Yeah. And you you said it best, man. Uh, Biza looked like a, like an action figure, all <laughs> stiff, just going down one more. And he was his his head was his eyes were rolling back. His head was out. Yeah. His kid the cam his him excuse me his head hitting the canvases. So it woke him back up and gave everybody the thought of oh maybe he might not be out. But yeah. if you've ever if you've ever experienced that. Next thing you know is you just wake up in the locker room asking what happened. And yeah, yeah, you were out, bro. Absolutely. I mean, similar to the Frankie Edgar when he got just flash knocked out and was like, no, bro, I'm good. And it's like, no, bro, you're not good. I promise. I'm I'm, t- I'm watching it. You're not good. I promise. Um, listen, man, this is Chaos Williams' first knockout win since uh, September or actually November, excuse me, of 2020 against Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. That's the one that kind of put him on the map, that one punch KO that just really blew him up. He gets another KO. Very impressive. But I will say, man, uh, my prediction unfortunately came to fruition i said baeza wins if he could stay away from that right hand of chaos williams it wasn't the right cross ended up being the right hook but the point remains you just can't get in the pocket and trade with these dudes who can like light you up with one shot like literally man chaos williams dangerous bad bad man um he moves to 13 and 2 4 and 1 in the ufc so i mean listen this is chaos williams said it himself in the post fight presser i think he said if they don't know now now they know like, I just let him, I put everybody on notice. The division is on notice. 170, watch out for Chaos Williams, my man. I do think that uh, those calf, kick, calf kicks were very, uh, were a big tell, a big hole in his game. Because you got to check those, bro. Because if you don't, um, li- literally, if he didn't land that crazy combo, I think Baeza would have won on points because his calf would have been decimated come round three. So, um well, I mean, it was round three when that happened, but towards the end of round three, you know what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, big, big win for Chaos Williams. We'll talk matchmaking in a second. Once again, that is a performance of the night bonus. 50K, well-deserved, brother. Well, well-deserved. Um, AJ, this next fight, man, I'm just going to say it off the bat. And listen, man, if I catch some flag for it, it's totally okay. Felicia Spencer dropped the ball, man. This was a wide open layup that she just bricked right here. This was a showcase bout. I said it in the pre-show. I said that she has all of the makings for this matchup to just put on a great performance to say, hey, this is why I do what I do. And did she put on a great performance? In a way, yes. But this is not just the fight game. This is also the entertainment business. Unfortunately, that's what boosts you up the ranks. That's what puts asses in seats and gets you higher up on the queue up in the main card. And I think she dropped the ball, my man. So I'm just going to say this. Real fast, AJ, you buzzing over there, uh, big dog, man. So you know what I'm saying? Let me just throw you on there. Um, AJ, let me ask you this. Or actually, let me tell you a story. So when I was in when I was in uh, middle school, AJ, I played basketball, right? You know, on the basketball team, we're doing our thing, and there's a there was a dude who I played basketball with. His name is Kyle, right? And this is a game where close back and forth game. We, you know what I mean? It's going to the buzzer. We got like ten seconds left. Gets a steal, fast break down the court, wide open, nobody around him to win the game, right? Literally, not to tie it, but to win the game. Wide open layup, misses. And that's it. Game over. We lose. Am I over here? Everyone's all crying and shit. You know, big deal because we're middle schoolers, you know, and I'm not I'm just sitting there like, God damn, not crying, unemotional. I'm just walking through like that was a missed opportunity. And that's just how I feel about Felicia Spencer here. Did she have a domination of a win against Leah Letson? Yes. Was she expected to dominate Leah Letson? Yes. Did anybody think that Leah Letson was a fit opponent for Felicia Spencer? No. This was the showcase bout, and she failed to deliver because, yes, did she get the finish? Round three, ground and pound um, with the TKO? Yeah, absolutely, man. But I just felt like she could have got the job done earlier. She predicted a first or second round KO. Didn't get that job done. Um, man, this this just, at the end of the day, this is the end of my rant here, AJ. This fight felt like it was meaningless. Like, they didn't fight. They weren't fighting for anything. There was no stakes. It was just It was just a fight. Which is cool, which is totally cool. But then what are we doing with this division, this featherweight division? AJ, am I wrong here? Am I being too harsh on Felicia Spencer, who is a very talented athlete? I just felt like this was a gimme, and you didn't deliver the way that you should have on a gimme, on a UFC saying, here, dude, happy birthday. I'm going to give you the free one. What do you think, brother? You know, I agree with you 100%, Derek. She should have had her out in the first one. She landed that knee to the head, man. That was uh, Leah Letson. I mean, all credit to Letson because she stayed strong. She stayed game. You know, she was she was in there, man. She was in there to work, but she was just getting dominated. Felicia Spencer easily could have had that, first, that round one or even that round two KO win or TKO win, however you want to put it. But uh, really dropped the ball here, man. And it really... 
even though she got the win, this is one of those wins where, yeah, yeah, you got it done, but it really hurts your stock. Like, do you want to see that kind of fight going forward against a person who's been out of the UFC for three years and you weren't able to finish it? Like, ugh, it's 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 not a lot of good stock going for Spencer going forward, and it doesn't make you excited to to watch. Like, oh, okay, who's gonna pair her up next with? Like, oh, she had this dominant win against an opponent. <laughs> you know, it's not really. And then no disrespect to Letson, you know, no no disrespect there. It's just that this was a gimme for Felicia Spencer, fighting somebody who arguably has needed more needed more fights in the UFC. Not that she doesn't belong in the UFC, not that she's not ready for it or anything. She just needed more fights in the UFC to be fighting somebody like Felicia Spencer. And anytime that's the case, it needs to be uh, an early win for the one we're, we're expecting, like Felicia should have had done to her. Um, yeah, Felicia definitely dropped the ball. This is one of those ones, like you said, this is a gimme. This is a layup. This, this should have been, like I said, with the with the round one knee to the face, that should have been the beginning of the end. And it just seemed like Felicia Spencer wasn't, maybe not willing to get it done, just didn't have that dog mentality of putting the finish on the girl. Yeah. She was she was there to grind it out against the fence, get the takedown, work the takedown, and then kind of smother her opponent instead of put that smash on him like we like mm-hmm. to see. You know, very yeah. interesting fight. Yeah. Like I said, hurts hurts Spencer's stock in my opinion, but what what stakes are there when there's really no rankings in the 145 pound division? I didn't. Even, I had a hard time pairing her up with who to fight next. We'll no. get to that in a bit. But uh, yeah, interesting fight overall. You know, yeah, yeah. Care. I agree, man. And I will say, just to be fair here, I think this is the same deal where Cyborg fought Spencer and went to a decision, and people were like, "Okay, if anything, like, dude, what? You couldn't finish who? Felicia who? Right? Felicia made her name off of going five rounds with Amanda Nunez and Chris Cyborg." And those were both stock drops for Nunez and Cyborg going to the decision with Spencer. So this is the same ideal just flipped for Spencer. Now you're the one who is the big dog. You're top three in the featherweight, arguably top two in that featherweight division. If there are any rankings, right? If we're just doing our own off the top, right? You're arguably top two. Um, and I'm not talking about the whole entire MMA landscape, just the UFC, right? You're fighting Leah Letson, who it's like that Felicia Spencer unknown. And you go almost to a decision. Like you, like... She was beating the brakes off of her, man. This is arguably two 10-8s. 10-8 round one, 10-8 round two. But the real question here, AJ, and this is the big thing that I was really concerning myself with, it's kind of like Jessica Rose, uh, Jessica Rose Clark's last fight against Jocelyn Edwards, man. Does this make anybody want to come watch your next fight? Like, not really. And if anything, it's like in the UFC video game when after you do a fight, you get like a popularity boost and all that, right? But if you have a shitty fight, you just get a little tiny boost. And like that's what it is, which is like a little tiny boost when you could have had like that highlight reel. Oh, you know, I put it on somebody. Who did I put it on? It doesn't matter because I highlight reeled their ass, you know? So listen, big win by Felicia Spencer because she needed the win, brother. I mean, when it comes down to it, she's 3-3 three and three in the UFC. This is her first win since February of 2020 against Zara Farron, who... Let's be honest, isn't the stiffest of competition right there um, for the, the type of hype that Felicia Spencer gets. Um, she was a uh, minus 300 favorite. She got the job done. Yeah, that's really all I got to say on that one, man. Big win by Felicia Spencer, but do think she dropped the ball on there. Don't mean to be too harsh here, folks. I'm just calling it as I see it because you got other people who did truly capitalize on their moment. And someone who I'm talking about who capitalized was Hogerio de Lima. Listen, my man, Pizau, he got the job done, you know, against Big Ben Rothwell. TKO round one, about 30 seconds, winging hooks from that Muay Thai stance. And I think this is truly a case of do not underestimate your opponents, folks. Even if you're an OG of the game, even if you're a true veteran, Ben Rothwell said it himself. He says, if I want to find myself back to where I need to be, I need to win every single one of my fights from here on out. Well, I mean, this one wasn't even close, dude. You know, DeLima, underdog, he actually was a uh, plus-125 underdog, folks, so you're welcome because I picked for him. So if you're following my picks, you got the job done right there. But uh, listen, man, AJ, you said you were surprised. I told you I wasn't particularly surprised that the job, you know, that he got the job done. I was surprised in the methodology and how quick, because if there was one way for him to win. It was the big winging, untechnical hooks that he was throwing. And for Ben Rothwell, I mean, it looked like he just said, I'm not going to evade. I'm just going to stand. I'm going to eat him on my chin. And that was the wrong move this time around, brother. What did you think of the fight? Whew, it was a wrong move for sure, Derek. A crazy 32 seconds. Roger DeLima looked like he had that kind of power that... uh that blanks you, you know, yeah. you, you ever get hit with a punch where you just don't know what you're doing anymore and you're just <laughs> reaching out, trying to like, ah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. He, he went Ricky Bobby on him. 
And uh, Ben Rothwell <laughs> paid the serious price, man, because those big boys, they got that power. And uh, Ben, he got caught reaching. You know, you, you don't, we always say it, you know, you don't reach for his punches. You put the guard up, you block. But uh, yeah, Rogerio de Lima. And, I, and I've actually liked, I've bet on Rogerio de Lima a couple times before in his previous fights. And he's really one of those up and down fighters. Mm-hmm. It depends on who he's going with. But uh, man. Crazy power, the yeah. the wing and hooks, the the style that the Delima likes to get it done is very fan favorite. And this is one of those fights that did boost up his yes. his uh his stock in the UFC and his in his fan base. You know, there's definitely going to be some uh some some more fans in the Roger Delima camp going forward. Like the fight, I mean, not much to say because 32, 32 seconds, it was basically yeah. a war in a telephone booth, yeah. and, and Ben Rothwell ate a big. Uh, I don't forget if it, I think it was a left. I can't remember, but either way, he ate some big shots to the chin. Wasn't able to hold up. Paid the price, man. Absolutely, man. And uh, Delima, he moves to eight and five in the UFC. First KO win since February of 2020. Sound familiar? Because that's just what we talked about in the last one, right? And this was against Ben Sassoli, a man who had never been knocked out before. So goes to show, like, listen, Rothwell knocks him out. Sassoli knocks him out. If you don't know who Delima is, now you know, folks. And uh, you're welcome. Like I said, this is the show where we try to let you know what's happening. But he's been around for a while, man. And he's a respected name. Even Rothwell, he's like, yeah, this dude's been around forever. So you know what I'm saying? Not forever, but he's been around a while fights out of american top team one of the best camps in the world um for mixed martial arts in america at least and uh yeah man like i said underdog win nothing much more to be said than respect you feel me and talking about respect aj um max holloway versus yair rodriguez this photo right here that's respect right there bro that's saying listen man we beat each other's asses it was fun you lost, I won, it happened, it is what it is, but he even said, Holloway even said it himself, he was all like, yo, this dude's a dog, da 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 viva Mexico, you know, shout out, all the good stuff, showing love to the to the Mexican people, to Yair's people, Um, I think Holloway truly respects him as an opponent, man, I think he says, like, yo, this dude is truly game, he really tried to put it on me, and I had to overcome some adversity, what do you think of this photo, and just, uh, listen, man, it was a war, but at the end of the day, I think we all kind of knew who was going to win come round three, round four, you know so what do you think i love this photo derek i think this is what's missing in today's day and age of the fact that sometimes you just got to throw hands with somebody and more often than not you you befriend them after you you guys earn a little bit of respect there's been many a times where uh you know you you get in a scrap next thing you know you're just you're chilling back drinking a couple brews with that guy it's just it is what it is you earn each other's respect and this is exactly why i like max blessed holloway going forward and I mean, Yair Rodriguez is an absolute dog. You you can only you cannot not respect somebody that you just went 25 minutes with in an absolute war going yeah. forward. And like I said before, Max Holloway was hurt a little bit, man. He was he was he had me worried for my pick going forward on this one. Yeah, I love this picture. Love the fight. Crazy fight, man. I you know I had it. Uh, I had the first round to Yair, mm-hmm. and then Holloway kind of running away with it after that. But still, not not running away by much. You know, Yair was very much on his tail, very much in the game. Had a couple – start off the rounds very, very good, and then kind of petered off towards the end. But, I mean, Blessed is an absolute machine, so it's hard to keep that cardio pace going when this dude's constantly staying in your face. But the power for Yair was there. Crazy, crazy kicks. I mean, we saw the photo of his foot. That's what happens when you're kicking that, that dude's shin, that knee, that that many times. Great fight. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. This was, uh, like I said before, an instant classic, man. Yeah, but, yeah that damn foot, man. Woo! Yeah, yeah he's going to be... Uh, He's going to be limping for a, a couple weeks probably on that one, man. What absolutely, absolutely. I will say this, man. How about the jujitsu of Max Holloway, man? Where did that come from, man? This dude was out here trying to grapple. He was trying to get standing guillotines. My man was trying to hit on some front chokes. I love to see it. I love to see the grappling of Max Holloway. It's a new element that he hasn't been able to show off too much in his game. But I will say, all in all, um, he needed to be an MMA fighter. He couldn't just be a boxer in here. And that's why I think if people were expecting the Max Holloway we saw against Calvin Cater, that was just such a tailor-made matchup that just allowed him to just box. I mean, Cater just boxed. He got away from the calf kicks, come round two, boxing all from there. Yair Rodriguez, he was hitting the body. He was hitting the calf. He was throwing kicks to the head, front kicks, a million different kicks from a million different angles. And AJ, man, we asked about it. It was a really big question mark for us. We said, how will Holloway deal with the calf kicks of Yair Rodriguez? I guess we found out. He just walks through them, which is a ridiculous game plan. And I honestly, this made me a little worried if he fights Alexander Volkanovsky again. 
This really did. This fight didn't make me feel like, oh, yeah, man, if he fights him again, he's just going to beat the brakes off of him. He's going to do this. Because I'm like, Volkanovski, you know he's coming for those calves. And we saw Holloway have to switch to southpaw a lot to, in order to stay effective because he just decides, like, I'm just not going to check. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. Do you think he can ever regain his featherweight championship with this fight style of not checking kicks? It's hard, man, because uh, Yair really made Holloway look almost not normal not a normal fighter mm -hmm. but uh, a contender uh yeah. somebody who's like oh, okay maybe he did lose those fights to Volkanovski he's working his way back up taking the stairs which we love but mm -hmm. he, Yair really proved that with his his skill level and the techniques he has and the kicks he's throwing you got to be worried about them you got to be checking them because if not man it, it's it's going to be a long long night and uh yeah I, I agree with you didn't really give me the um the confidence to say that that Holloway going forward is this new this new animal. This, you know, he's he's reinvented the wheel. He's he's getting back. He's going to be a champ again. It made me think like, damn, this is going to be an interesting fight to see how Volkanovski does because those calf kicks are real deal, man. I don't know why. I, I legitimately don't know why anyone doesn't check them. Maybe it's you know they just. I don't know. I honestly don't. I honestly have zero idea because because those things hurt, man. Those you, you get kicked in the calf, it hurts like crazy. I do want to comment on the uh, on the jujitsu on the ground game of Max Holloway, man. He looked like he was. Uh, I know they always have a little bit of back and forth with him and the Daddis man alive, the DC. Yeah. It looked like he went and got a little bit of help from DC, bro. Yeah, that, that wrestling was pretty on point. He was looking really, really good. Even the defenses, the submission attempts, all around. Really good performance for Max Holloway, but do you think he can get that same kind of wrestling done against Volkanovski? Because, yeah, the calf kicks are one thing, but the wrestling that Volkanovski presents is a whole another different animal. What do you think? It'll be tough. I mean, Volkanovski is a really, really good wrestler. Um, and I thought I saw more jujitsu than I saw wrestling from Max Holloway, because if you look at it, it was a lot of escaping the heel hooks, you know what I mean? Maintaining top control, getting side control, um, you know, just trying to stay on that front choke, like all the basic positions you're going to get into in a normal jujitsu, uh, you know what I mean, match or whatever. But in terms of wrestling, man, I don't know. I think Volkanovski's too much in that department, and especially when he knows to double down on the wrestling because oh, this dude's a striker. I don't got to worry about uh, Brian Ortega jumping on a guillotine on me or a triangle, you know what I'm saying? Because unless Holloway can pull those types of things out of his belt, he didn't really come close against Yair with those guillotines. Like that, that, I'll tell you, that standing guillotine, that one looked locked in, man. Those skinny... I'll tell you, these honestly, the people who are the most dangerous in jiu-jitsu have the skinny-ass arms, blades, who are just digging in your throat, man. They can just slip it in there, you know what I'm saying? And So he might be able to like surprise them, but I think Volkanovski's wrestling will be too much. The smart thing to do is do where he be where he is arguably the best, which is on the feet, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about arguably the best in the division, right? Where he's just, as a stand-up fighter, there's not many people who can contend with Max Holloway because the best is blessed. He is 19 and six in the UFC two fight win streak, which seems crazy. But then you think those two last losses he had were to Volkanovski. Um, UD win minus 625 uh, on, on the open. He cashed in on that one. Big favorite, but for a reason. I'll just say this fight did more for Yaya Rodriguez than it did for uh, Max Holloway, in my opinion. I think he will maintain his number three ranking. If not, maybe jump down to four or five or something with this loss. But you lose to number one in the division, so you shouldn't really jump down at all, personally. AJ, man, fight of the night. What, what, I mean, do you think Yaya Rodriguez, after he rehabs the foot, gets right, which sucks, right? Because you don't have to deal with another little layoff after you just had a 25-month layoff. But do you think this man is going to be sticking around in that top three to top five for the years to come? Yeah, I think so, man. It, it did a lot more. This fight did a lot more for Yair, Yair Rodriguez than it did Max Holloway, in my opinion. Earned a lot of respect in my book, man. You you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Max Holloway and you end up hurting him a little bit with the power that Yair possesses. Yeah, I think he stays in that top two, top five position going forward. Absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see who they pair him next with because that's going to be an absolute scrap, man. I have Yair a favorite depending on who we're matching him up with but the the techniques he has is very scary and the mindset he has as well it goes perfect hand in hand with how he fights man i love it okay well right on man let's expect bright things in the future for both of these fighters clearly both of them are, i think are only 29 years old man so that's what's even scarier they haven't even hit the prime of their careers yet uh, but big win big win for max holloway man and you already know who's next it's gonna be the champ so let's talk about it aj let's hit a little matchmaking and drop a like and all that good stuff folks hey 
Um, Max Holloway, he only has one option right here. It's the trilogy. You have to fight Alexander Volkanovsky. You have to figure out who is the baddest man in the 145-pound division. Yes, Volkanovsky had a great title defense against Brian Ortega, but we saw what Holloway did to Brian Ortega, and it was not even close. So now it has to be decided. Volkanovsky, he's 23-1. and He's on a 20-fight win streak, man. It's the only choice. Is there anything else to say on that? Nah, man. Other uh, unless he's going for the belt or red panty night against McGregor, because he was threatening that or tweeting that. I don't think that's the fight to make, man. Yeah. I think you go for the belt, you go for the ship, and then you fight, you know, somebody else, whoever you want. After that, then you then you make your decisions if you want to go get paid or not. Yeah. But I think the belt comes first. And I agree with you. And I know that McGreg- McGregor is the cash cow and all that good stuff, man. But let's not lie. After losses, after loss, after loss. It's not the steam isn't there anymore, man. You can only lose so many times before people are like, okay, dude, you know, yeah, you beat McGregor, but who has he beat recently, right? Like, you don't want to have to go through that. So, I think that, yeah, get that belt, man. Um, in the heavyweight division, Marcos Rogerio de Lima, he came in about 32, beat Rothwell, who was ranked about number 20, man. So, that's a 12 spot jump right there. And uh, I got a banger of a matchup, I got one banger banger of a matchup man and i don't know it might be too much for him in terms of ranking too big of a jump but uh i'm just gonna go ahead and say it man i got bam bam tied to a vasa you know what i'm saying i think that uh he's he's ranked number 13 on topology he's not ranked in the ufc rankings um but if he could do to rothwell what he did in that amount of time I would love to see how he can contend against a bam bam because even if he tries to take to a down yeah, good luck. Easier said than done. You might not want to even be on the ground with Tua Vasa because uh, if he ends up somehow getting on top of you, man, you're going to sleep. Let's see how it plays out, right? It's one of those. What do you think about that one, brother? Man, that matchup just sounds fun. You, yeah. you tell me Rogerio de Lima versus Bam Bam Tua Vasa. I'm grabbing the popcorn. Yeah. I'm not turning anywhere for that TV, man. I'm looking dead center because that's a fun fight. That one's going to be on a highlight reel for one of those two dudes. Mm-hmm. I like that fight a lot. I, I went I went with somebody that I need to see a little bit of wrestling for. You know, I want to see because because Delima he obviously can get it done both up and down on the ground, whether it's standing or, or like I said on the ground. Yeah, he he's he's able to get it done. But I didn't want to go too too high with this guy. I'm taking the stare approach on this one, man. I'm going to Lear Latifi, which is I was still very much a killer in the game. Um, not as big of a jump. I think he was around twenty or nineteen. 18, somewhere right around that 20 mark. I can't really remember. But uh, I think it's a good match for him, at least technique-wise, skill-wise. It's a little bit of a step up, but that Bam Bam fight, man, that's a a hell of a leap and a hell of a lot of fun going forward. If you want to see something entertaining, I think that's the one to make, to be honest. I think so, too. But I like the Latifi pick because I think that that is a same deal as the Bam Bam fight, except just a little less... um, how would you say? Yeah, just a little less energy on it. You feel me? It's like it's the same fun. It's just you got to take it down a couple notches. You know what I'm saying? But bangers either way. Um, AJ, you said you said you had a tough time finding someone for Felicia Spencer, the phenom, man. Um, I got there's no rankings in the in this division. I just said give her another no name until you guys eventually sign Kayla Harrison. If not, you know, cut her, go somewhere else, take her down to bantamweight, whatever. I have nobody. So if you have nobody, that's totally fine because listen, man, what the, what are we gonna do? Leah Letson came out of left field. There's no way anyone could have predicted that. You can tell me who you have, or we could just pass on this. You know, your choice, brother. Man. I'm going with Aspen Ladd. I think Aspen Ladd's new division needs to be that 145 pound class. That again, this is all being on the fact that she doesn't want to cut back down to 135. Mm-hmm. If she, if she if Aspen Ladd's willing to stay in the 145 pound class, get a little bit shorter of a shot towards that title, I think it's a good fight. Other than that, there's literally no one else. Like there's literally <laughs> there's, well, you can't yeah. do anything. I don't know. That's what I was gonna say is that I'm like, okay, Aspen Ladd, it makes sense. But you got like four names to even like pick from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, Aspen Ladd, I don't I don't think she wants that smoke with Felicia Spencer personally. I think on the feet it might be interesting, but Felicia Spencer gonna get her into the ground and basically do what she did to Leah Letson, I believe personally. But all right, Chaos Williams, man. Came in at thirty. Gets a couple jump up, you know, maybe about 27 for beating Miguel Baeza, who is interesting that he was in front of uh, Chaos Williams in terms of the rankings. But um, listen, man, this could be really interesting where he goes here. And I'm interested to know who you have for Chaos Williams because, uh, I mean, listen, sky is the limit on this one. What do you think? Bro, the sky's the limit, and literally everybody above him is an absolute dog. Like, I was looking at the matchups going forward. I was like, damn, this dude has, like, a hell of a road to toll going forward if he wants to get to that championship. I went with a little 
what some would say is an underknown name as far as uh, if unless you're the hardcore you don't really know this guy you know hasn't really fought in a while doesn't have a matchup coming in a bit there's a, a whole bunch of different names you can choose from but this dude is still a killer man i'm going with a, a, a Lizu zaleski man okay. zaleski is dangerous very very game good hands good feet good ground game it's gonna be interesting to see it's a little easy it's probably the easiest test i could give uh, Chaos Williams going forward, but Zaleski, you know, don't forget this dude's been in the UFC a very long time and very, very dangerous, and it's not an easy road at all. So it's it's hard to see, but it's the easiest one I see going forward, at least okay. at least competition wise. It's still a very big step up, but not like the other killers that are in the division going forward. Who do you have? Well, first, man, easy test and Zale- uh, Zaleski, Dos Santos, those d- two things don't even match up right there, man. He is a killer. He's knocked out Sean Strickland. I think he just fought recently, man. I think he got a big win in his last fight. So um, I think that's an interesting matchup, man. I think that'd be a very tough matchup because it would be similar to the Michel Paeda fight that Chaos Williams had where it would just, you know, it's just, it's hard to fight those types of people. I got somebody who's a bona fide, absolute killer who Chaos Williams would not want to fight because there's no star power behind him. It's just a mauling incoming. And I'm talking about my dark horse for the 170 pound division, the future champion of the 170 pound division, Shavkat Rachmanov, man. Mean, mean motherfucker right there. His nickname is the Nomad. Um, he is huge for the division. Listen, man. You want a dude who could strike and a dude who could wrestle and a dude who could just maul and has mauled basically everybody in his in his way. He's 14 and 0, 14 wins. Shavkat Rachmanov is the man. You have to fight these dudes if you want to really be a contender in this division. And it's only a matter of time. I promise you, you heard it here first. I don't I will scream it into the mountaintops, man. I've been doing this actually for the better part of this entire year. I know you heard me talk about Rachmanov a long time ago, right? The man is a killer. He's the real deal. And uh, this will be a big step up in the competition for Rachmanov, but also for Williams. This is a dude who has got an interesting frame and can basically do it all. You're going to have to prove yourself. Yes, you could beat up the dudes who could stand up cool, but let's see the grappling. Let's see all that stuff, man. If you want to make it to that top 15, if you want to really put the division on notice, you got to beat those type of guys. What do you think about that one, man? Yeah, that, that was one of the ones I was looking at. And that's that's just, that's a yeah. dog right there, bro. Yeah. That's a hard fight. I even had uh, Rachmanov as a sleeper way back in the day because this yeah. dude, I agree with you, Derek, very much so going to be the gonna be the champ soon. Maybe not yeah. soon, but the champ in the future. And uh, I don't know if Williams wants that smoke yet, man. Maybe, maybe to still the dude's uh, thunder and his star power, but that's a hard fight, man. A very yeah. interesting one, very fun one. Rachmanov is a killer, though. Yeah, and that's the cost of winning, unfortunately, right? Is you don't have a choice. You have to fight the killers now. You know, you shouldn't have got the win, shouldn't have beat the dude, but now you did. Now you gotta fight the killer. All right, man, Song Yidong. I got an even better matchup on this one, man. One that you might not expect. You might it kind of makes sense. There's only so many ways you can go here. But uh like I told you earlier, I think he needs to fight someone in the top ten, and I got somebody there. Who do you have, AJ? Yeah, I agree. I had somebody in the top ten as well. I actually I'm not sure if he's in the top ten, but he's definitely ranked. He's a star. He's been kind of on a downward slope so i think it's 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 about his time to be fighting the young up-and-comers kind of working his way into that gatekeeper position i'm going magic marlon marais man i think that's a great fight kicks on kicks on kicks both the same kind of style crazy power crazy speed bro that's going to be a highlight fight all day long what do you think is that the guy you're going with too you said it right there man he is ranked he's ranked number nine in the division marlon marais great striker Listen, striker versus striker, first to shoot is a bitch. That's it. That's how we got to say on this one. You know what I mean? Keep it plain. Keep it simple. I think that that's going to be a great matchup. And yes, for Marlon Marais, you've lost, what, two, three in a row. You have to fight the end of the division now to stay relevant to keep your number. You're in the Tony Ferguson kind of spot, unfortunately. So um, this is going to be fish food for Song Yudong in terms of this is a hungry man who wants to take your number bad. And uh, you're an OG, you're a veteran, and you're a great striker, a great mixed martial artist. So let's see if he's still got what it takes against some of these young hungry guns, man. But that's the match making folks we hit it all whole main card you already know what time it is and lastly we just got some newswire aj and we can get up out of here my man all right so in terms of the newswire only got a couple of things here but i wanted to ask you your opinion on this frankie edgar right undecided on his retirement doesn't really want to retire and it's understandable right when he still feel like he got it however he has revealed that uh he fought cheeto vera after just getting hip surgery like months prior which is like huh interesting I'm glad that you, you know, you didn't make any excuses, but also terrible decision, right? You know, a hip, a hip surgery, hip replacement, and then let me go fight. Mm. So he, uh, he said all that, right? And he said, 
I never really made it public. That's an accomplishment in it of itself coming back from that. That's something I wanted to prove to myself. A lot of people think if you get something like that, it's the end of something. And not only did I do it, I fucking did it quickly. I felt amazing. My hip felt fucking amazing. He also added that he's having issues with his back, which have plagued him since he had surgery on the area when he was 18. And though surgery has helped him through, you know, collegiate wrestling and pro fighting career, he's saying that he now has uh, nerve issues on one side of his back and he set up an appointment to figure out whether he needs more surgery or uh, perhaps a less invasive treatment so it does kind of sound like it's the beginning of the end but i guess the big point is with this news getting out does that mean anything to you about the result of the cheeto verify are you impressed are you like dang are you saying this to make an excuse i don't know what do you think it sounds a little bit like uh like an excuse almost like you know like hey yeah I'm, i have some sympathy for me guys i went through a i went through a hip replacement obviously i don't i don't think that's what frank Yetter is doing i think he you know he's actually saying like yo like i'm trying to tell you guys i went through this with this crazy injury with this going after surgery you can see it both ways um not as impressive for me <laughs> I, I i'm wondering why the fuck you do that you know yeah. why why what's what are you gaining from having a hip surgery and then going out and fighting man you're just putting yourself at risk why would you do that like, yeah. that makes no sense to me um impressive though i mean impressive for him to be able to get it done like that but still you got kicked in the face regardless i don't think that hip surgery helped much probably should have taken a little bit more time off i don't yeah. know man what do you think what it, how do you take this one it's rough man it's interesting that the news got out but uh, i'm a little impressed i'm not gonna lie because i mean you saw ben Askren look stiff as a board when he did his boxing match after the hip replacement but that was a, that was pretty soon too I don't know, man. I think this is the beginning of the end for Frankie Edgar. I think it's as simple as that. You know, that's the that's the unfortunate part about it. Unless you get out on top or you get out when you want to, the game you like you don't quit the game. The game quits you. You know what I mean? And it's unfortunate, but I mean, father time undefeated. You know, um, AJ Christian Hollywood Lowson. 26-year-old Floridian who started his MMA career in 2014. He's fought in the PFL. Uh, he loses a testicle in a training accident, dog. Crazy. I know. It's the first off. It's like, how does, how does that even happen? So uh, this is a post that he made, I believe, on Instagram. So I'm going to read it. It says, quote, <clears throat> So last night was rough. In a training accident, I got my left testicle ruptured by a knee, which led to getting it surgically removed. Thank you to everyone last night who helped me get to the hospital. I'm fine home resting. Surgery went well. Doc said I won't lose testosterone or ability to have kids from this. If I lose the other one, however, it's a different story. So from now on, if you hit me in my last testicle, we aren't friends. Dot, dot, dot. Hashtag no nut November. Hashtag one ball wonder. Hashtag MMA is a dangerous game. Hashtag took no nut November way too far. Um, my man lost a nut. <laughs> he lost a nut in a training accident. Now, this is one of those, and it's training, and it happens, you know, uh, an errant knee. It happens. But this should put everyone on notice. Like, yo, how come we letting dudes get away with three nut shots before giving them a warning in the UFC and all that? Like, we got to watch out for ourselves. Yeah, we wearing cups and all that, but still. What do you make of this, AJ? Oof, that's rough, man. It makes me wonder if he was wearing the cup in training or like what happened, if it didn't fit properly. It's it's the worst shot. I you know, I got a little sister and I always tell her, you know, somebody's fucking with you, kick them right in the nuts, because that's that's the way to get it done. It's it's a fight, you know, whatever, man. You you take you do what you gotta do because it hurts like crazy. Man, losing a losing a testicle. Ah, whew do you keep fighting do you keep fighting do you keep do you put yourself at risk of you know your family your future your lineage your testosterone like you basically being a man do you keep it going personally i don't man i keep my one nut and i i hit the, I hit the bricks on that one what about you derek did lance armstrong quit when he lost his nut aj <laughs> Hell no. Yeah, That's but he right. was going on EPO, brother. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he had man. to juice up hey, to get listen, it going. Man, this dude ain't in the UFC. EPO might still be on the table, you dig? So listen, man, do what you gotta do. I'll just say that. But uh listen, man, ain't no bitch. Shout out to shout out to the homie, Joseph Andreas, right? Ain't no bitch. Let's go. Um, all right, my man. <laughs> Uh, last thing, former NFL star Frank Gore. You remember my man Frank Gore, NFL legend, right? He set to box Deron Williams, who was a former Utah Jazz point guard, dog. You know, Brooklyn Nets played for him, you know, too. This is back in my, in my day, you know, Deron Williams. Um, they're boxing on the Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury undie, undercard. I just got to say this, man. Are we not done with this? I thought we had already passed it. Are we, are we still doing this? Okay. Are you tuning in? What are you thinking, brother? No, I'm not tuning in at all, man. I'm I'm not tuning in. I I really don't care. You, it's basically like uh, you know, throwing like throwing gloves on in the locker room. Like, all right, yeah, that's exciting. Like, cool. Two dudes who don't know how to punch are gonna be swinging swinging fists at each other. All right, that's that can be interesting. But there's a lot better other stuff going on. 
not too excited for it. I mean, I'm happy that uh, other sports are starting to branch out because I've said for a long time, you get these dudes, you get a, a man who's like built like LeBron James and teach him how to throw punches and kicks since he's a kid. Woo, that's going to be a very yeah. dangerous fighter, man. You do not want to meet that dude in, in a dark alleyway. Yeah. And uh, a lot of a lot of like even um, – even, I was trying to think of that um, – I can't remember his name. Tall dude, very long name, basketball player. There's a Giannis, lot of them. Uh, Giannis. Yeah, Giannis. Thank you uh-huh. so much. Giannis, uh, you, even him in, in, this, in the fight game, man, the long length that he has, imagine a snapping front kick from him. Yeah, very dangerous. So it's cool to see that other sports are branching out into the into the fight world, but not that excited. Yeah. What about you? I'm not, I'm not excited. I'm not going to watch it, but I will give you some context. I think Frank Gore has had a pretty extensive boxing background in terms of training, mm-hmm. um, you know, in his NFL career. And for Deron Williams, he actually owns an MMA gym. He has for quite for like many years now, you know. So he's in there. He's doing the thing. He runs it. All that good stuff. So it's not like these dudes like are just putting on a pair of gloves and just be like, all right, randomly, you know, let's do it. But uh, still, you guys are stick to your lane. NFL, NBA. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you. You said the same thing as the locker room. This reminds me as a kid what we did for fun because we were juvenile delinquent is we would just go to the park with boxing gloves and just box like just for like literally for fun not because we we're mad at each other or just like hey i'm bored you guys want to box yeah, yeah let's do it only got one pair of gloves okay i'll take the right you take the left you know what i'm saying like we figure something out whatever it reminds me of that you know what i'm saying this is a spectacle um i just think it's ridiculous man that we keep going down this road and that at the end of the day does this impress people yes the layman of course you know what i mean but if when you go from watching max holloway versus the ir rodriguez to frank gore versus deron williams that's it's like what the fuck am i watching it's a it's a disgrace to the sport it's a disgrace to the art you know but uh i'll leave that rant aside you guys already know i just brought that up because i'm like god damn man we're still doing this huh all right, AJ. Looks like that's just about the end of the show here today over here for uh, UFC Vegas 42 post show. Next week, Ketlin Vieira versus Cupcake Misha Tate. Man, this bout got rescheduled because Tate had COVID a couple weeks back. Now we're ready to go, ready to rock. Should be a fun one, AJ. And I just wanted to preview a couple of things, uh, a couple of fights that are coming up. Michael Chiesa versus Sean Brady. Rebooked. Sean Brady had to pull out the last time because of a, a foot infection back on the table right there joanne wood no longer joanne calderwood she is now married to her coach so joanne wood is fighting tyler santos banger alert uh davy grant versus adrian yanez always fun to see yanez back in there scrapping ronnie yaya back over here against kyo uh kyo hung kang kang i believe is his name man big big uh he's a savage dude right there dude very good fighting out of south korea uh rafa garcia your boy i'm telling you he has a tough matchup in his next fight against natan levy man this dude is from greek he looks like a bodybuilder monster right there aj uh loma luke boon me gets a fight against lupi godinez who is now just the cowboy cerrone of the women's strawweight division because she's taking anyone anytime anywhere brother that's going to be a banger last thing that i got to mention terrence mckinney you might remember the name dude had uh, i think he had two like under one minute knockouts in a week span one in the lfa and one in the ufc lfa was for a title ufc was for the debut celebrates by jumping up and then like tear something in his knee upon his celebration he's that guy remember him he's back in action against faraz ziam man and uh, i don't know if you remember him french fighter long very very good got a big win in his last matchup gonna be a big matchup uh what do you think about this card man it's shaping up to be pretty decent huh yeah, it's actually shaping up to be real decent. Uh, it's always interesting to see the card that they have whenever it's the the headliners is, is a woman fight. I mean, the the, the headliner is going to be amazing. Cupcake Tate back with uh, Ketlin Vieira. It's going to be very interesting to see. But there's a lot of bangers on that undercard, man. Or not on the undercard, on the main card. But still going to be very interesting to see, man. I'm excited uh, for the Rafa fight, for the even the Faraz Zion fight, man. Yeah, that's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting to watch, man. Absolutely, folks. So you know where to find us. Mondays and Fridays, 8 a.m. Keep it locked in. Short clips dropping at noon on Mondays and at noon on Fridays. So if you don't care about watching this whole hour-long program, that's totally fine. I get it. There's only so many hours in a day. That's why we got condensed clips for you that we put up on our YouTube channel, Bloody Water Podcast. Just type it in or Free Thinkers Club. Or if you're doing the right thing, man, you just hit this button right here in front of us that says subscribe you dig you subscribe get us to 300 we really appreciate you guys we appreciate the comments i've been uh, over there making sure that i'm responding replying yeah some of y'all got some opinions that agree with us some of them disagree with us either way we're welcoming it we want to hear it and we want to uh not have a circle jerk of just you know all the same opinions man let's have discussion dialogue all the good stuff aj you got any last words for the people brother 
Derek, you said it best, man. I love the fact that there's arguments going on in the comment section. Keep it up. Whether you agree with what we're saying, you disagree with what we're saying, we appreciate everything. It helps out the algorithm going forward and help us get to get to the, some people that also either agree or disagree with what we're saying. You know, people like to talk about this sport. It's growing. It's growing a lot. And we like to see a lot more people coming in. We appreciate everything you've done for us so far, man. We love it so much over here. And yeah, man, until next week, you know where to find us. You know where to find find us folks so until next time folks that's it peace